so today i am going to discuss about the 5g inter questions and answer so let's start my first question is in which release was 5g published so as per uh, 3gpp release 15 and above 5g was published okay however if you uh, talk about the lt so lt comes in release 8 and above okay my next question is what is the data rate and latency in 5g so the downlink data rate is 20 gbps in 5g and uplink data rate is 10 gbps in 5g and latency is 1 millisecond however latency in 4g was 10 millisecond so we can say this is the uh, 10 times faster in term of the latency 5g okay now next question is what is the sub carrier spacing in 5G? So, sub carrier spacing uh, is not fixed in the 5G, it is variable, or we can say we have the multiple value for the sub carrier spacing that is 15, 30, 60, 120, 240 kHz. However, in LT, it was 15 kHz only. Okay, here uh, 15 to 60 kHz. Carrier spacing is used for uh, below than 6 gigahertz frequency band and uh, 120 to 240 kHz subcarrier spacing is used for the high frequency band or we can say the millimeter wave. Now, next question is how many slots per subframe are in 5G? Okay, so uh, a slot per subframe is not fixed in the 5G it is variable or we can say it depends on the carrier spacing okay so if carrier spacing is 15 kilohertz then uh, uh, subframe will be only one slot one we can say and that for one millisecond okay 15 kilohertz number of slot per subframe is one but if we use the subcarrier spacing 30 kilohertz then slot will be divided in two parts or if we use 60 kilohertz then it will divided in four and for 120 kilohertz slot per subframe will be eight and uh, for 240 kilohertz slot will be 16 for one subframe okay so this will uh, this way this will be variable now next question is how many symbol per slot in 5g so 14 symbol for normal cyclic prefix and 12 symbol for extended, extended cyclic prefix. Next question, which frequency range support 5G? Okay, so in 5G as we know we have two frequency, one is frequency 1 and second one is frequency range 2. Okay, so frequency range 1 belongs between the 450 megahertz to 6 gigahertz and frequency range 2 belongs to 24.25 to 52.6 gigahertz okay frequency range 1 is used for the FDD and TDD both but for frequency range 2 it is used only for the TDD mode generally frequency range 2 is used for the millimeter wave okay for the higher frequency band uh, next question is what is the minimum and maximum bandwidth supported in 5G okay so in 4G uh, we have the bandwidth 5 10 15 20 and minimum bandwidth was 5 and maximum bandwidth was 20 in 4G support but in 5G it depends on the frequency range 1 and frequency range 2 so for frequency range 2 sorry for uh, frequency range 1 we have the bandwidth 5 10 15 20 25 30 40 50 60 80 90 and 100 so what is the minimum minimum is 5 and what is the maximum bandwidth that is 100 for frequency range 1 and for frequency range 2 minimum is 50 and maximum is 400 megahertz okay next question is what is a 5g millimeter wave spectrum so 5g millimeter wave spectrum means that is the higher frequency band spectrum and higher frequency band spectrum comes under the frequency range 2 so this value frequency spectrum belongs to 24.25 to 52.6 gigahertz okay and for the millimeter wave we can say it can provide higher throughput because of the higher bandwidth see it coverage are very very shorter like 100 meter or 150 or 200 meter like that 
so whenever any operator will deploy an entire nation they have to deploy in every 100 or 200 meter like electric pole are deployed in our area so this is the picture you can say this is a picture that belongs to the 5g millimeter wave this way this will be deployed nowadays it is already deployed in multiple countries uh, and it is not deployed in nation wise they deployed where they have the big clutter high clutter or the congested area so those area only they can uh, use it 5g millimeter wave okay now next question is what are the different type of frequency band required for 5g deployment question means when a operator want to deploy the 5g what are those frequency band or type is required that can say uh, it can fulfill the criteria of the deployment so it is uh, coverage layer one requirement is coverage layer one requirement is capacity layer and one requirement is high throughput layer so for the coverage layer a operator required a band that is less than one gigahertz that can support for the high coverage so if they deploy the coverage lever they can cover the co uh, entire nation for the coverage perspective nowadays uh, some operator are using 600 band and uh, 700 band uh, 600 means 600 megahertz and 700 means 700 megahertz frequency band they are using for the uh, coverage layer that is the less than 1 gigahertz now capacity layer capacity layer comes between the 1 to 7.125 gigahertz so some of the operator is already using like 1900 2100 2300 megahertz and 2500 megahertz so 1900 megahertz means 1.9 gigahertz so it is greater than 1 gigahertz but these are less than 7.1 okay 2.5 something so this is the capacity layer and for high throughput layer the 24.25 to 52.6 gigahertz and some operator is already using 28 gigahertz 39 gigahertz for the deployment okay so these are the successful deployment and operator required for the deploy the network now what is the lowest frequency used in 5g for rolled out so as per my understanding till now 600 megahertz frequency band is used as a lower frequency band for the coverage layer okay next question is what is the highest frequency band used in 5g rolled out okay so this question was the lowest frequency band and now this question is for the highest frequency band so as per my understanding i think 47 gigahertz is uh, that can be used for the uh, higher uh, frequency band for the 5G rolled out, but I'm not sure if someone is already deployed the 47 gigahertz or not. But I know 39 gigahertz is already deployed. Okay, and uh, I also working for 39 gigahertz. Okay, now next question is how many components support 5G carrier aggregation? Okay, so you know in carrier aggregation we have to aggregate the carrier, multiple carrier we can aggregate to uh, increase our bandwidth so that we can get the higher throughput okay so in 4g uh, we have the five component carrier but in 5g we have the 16 component carrier and in 4g uh, and in 4g after the uh, aggregating of the carrier we can get the maximum bandwidth that was the 100 megahertz means in 4g we have maximum bandwidth 20 megahertz so if we multiply 20 into 5 because 5 component carrier we can use in 4G so it will go 100 megahertz maximum bandwidth but in 5G uh, our maximum bandwidth for, is 400 megahertz so we can use up to 400 uh, megahertz bandwidth for 16 CC component carrier okay so th this is the component carrier aggregation now which frequency is used for massive memo so whatever the frequency that are greater than 2 gigahertz that can be used for the massive memo now next question is it is possible to run 4g and 5g in the same spectrum band yes many operator is already using 4g and 5g in same spectrum band okay now which spectrum is used for the 5g private network so nowadays many countries uh, uh, many companies are using for the 5G private network so you must know uh, which frequency or which spectrum is used for the 5G private network so all available 5G spectrum can be used for the uh, private network whatever the spectrum is available that all can be used for the private network now next question is that is very important what is ENDC so ENDC E for Evolve Utra 
n for new radio dc means dual connectivity so in 5g uh, in the starting phase of the 5g we have uh, nsa nsa means non standalone so in non standalone we are using the core network of the 4g this way we are deploying the 5g network so when in uh, in the nsa case endc due to the help of the endc only we can use the 5g network access okay so a uv can connect to the lte see here a uv can connect to the lte and then add 5g cell then it can add to 5g cell so uv will be connected to lte e node b as with the as well as 5g e node b once it connected to the 5g e node b it can inform to the uv and this way uv will directly connected to the g node b but whatever the functionality will goes for uh, control plane that goes uh, via the 4g e node b and user plane comes via the 5g e node b so this is the endc in endc uv is connected to the both network 4g and 5g and transmitting the data via the 5g uh, and uh, for the control signaling it is using the 4g network now next question is uh, what is network slicing network slicing is also very very important terminology that comes under uh, in the 5g only so in uh, network slicing uh, you can understand with the help of this picture okay 5g network uh, can be virtualized and can be divided for different type of the different uh, different requirement for the different users okay so let's say this is the 5g network and some users uh, want to use it as a uh, for the communication purpose internation entertainment purpose and internet purpose okay and some users want to use the 5g network for the retail shipping or the manufacturing purpose some users want to use it as a atom for the automotive medical and infrastructure and some can uh, some requirement are something different so this way like some people have the requirement high internet speed some people uh, requirement is high latency and some people requirement is high mobility so every every uh, department or every type of the uh, people or every type of the users requirement is different so how we can fulfill the every people's requirement that uh, that can be do uh, with the help of the network slicing so in network slicing we can uh, divide our network in different different slices based on the user requirement okay so this is the network slicing next question is what is dss it is also very important terminology that come only in the 5g so dss is the dynamic spectrum sharing as word you can understand spectrum is sharing dynamically how it possible like how it can understand uh, how we can understand so to understand it uh, this way let's say we have the spectrum uh, two spectrum uh, for uh, 20 megahertz and 20 megahertz so 10 uh, one uh, 20 megahertz we can align to lt and 120 megahertz we can align to 5g so this is called the stat static reforming okay but uh, in the dynamic spectrum sharing what we can do entire 40 megahertz bandwidth can assign to 4g and uh, 5g both and based on the user requirement uh, it can be dynamically divided let's say in the particular area uh, users are came and some users supported uh, the 5g network some users uh, handset support the 5g network and some users uh, handset support the 4g network and let's say in that particular area more users came those handsets support the 5g network and less user came for the LT, uh, those handset support the LT network. So here in the dynamic spectrum sharing, more bandwidth uh, can be shared to the, can be goes to the 5G network and less bandwidth goes to the LT network. It's not like the 50%, 50%. Here it will go 10% uh, and 90%, 20% and 80% like that. So our entire spectrum will be shared dynamically. Okay. And here, whatever the uh, whatever the antenna we are using whatever the uh, radio we are using that will be the common and our spectrum also will be common let's say if we are using the 25 megahertz bandwidth so 25 megahertz bandwidth will be used for the 4g and 5g and same antenna can provide the 4g and 5g coverage okay so this is the dynamic spectrum sharing so that's all for the today this is my first video uh, for the 5g interview question and answer i have some other video as well 
like 5G Nokia Air Scale hardware. So if you want to learn about the Nokia hardware Air Scale in details, so you must watch this video that is 21 more than 21 minute of video. You can have a very great understanding about the all Nokia hardwares about their uh, configurations and all. Okay. And if you are the drive test engineer, you must watch the my drive testing parameter video. In this video, uh, see uh, in the 25 minute discussion, I discuss all the um, uh, basic parameter that are required to check at the time of the drive testing. What is the meaning of that and what is the value of those parameters you can uh, come to know in this video. And if you are the RF optimization engineer, you have to must watch this video. In this video, I have discussed in detail about the some parameter tuning that can help to improve your accessibility KPI in 5G. And if you are looking for the 5G career aggregation, then you have must watch this video. That is the seven minute video and the basic understanding. You can know the differentiation between the 4G and 5G career aggregation. And if you want to learn about the RF optimization and want to know the name of the 5G KPIs, then you have to watch this KPI. In this, uh, in, uh, in this video, I have covered all the Nokia KPIs that are required to basic health checkup of the network. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will prepare for the next video. That is the part two, uh, part two for the interview question and answer. Keep watching. Keep like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much.